there's been a growing amount of fear going around about the possibility of an upcoming recession. On Monday, August 5th, Wall Street's fear gauge, which is the SIBO Volatility Index, shot up 64.9%. That's the biggest surge in the VIX since the pandemic in 2020, and the results were widespread. The stock market posted its worst day in two years, and some international markets did even worse. Additionally, some discouraging news came out about the economy, showing that job growth had slowed down significantly and unemployment rose to 4.3%, a larger-than-expected increase. With all this in mind, it's understandable that some believe a recession, whether a big one or a small one, is possible in the year ahead. People who rely on the income from their holdings for retirement or people who just enjoy a regular cash distribution are likely asking themselves if their holdings can make it through a market crash or a recession if there happens to be one in the near future. In this video, we'll take a look at some high-yielding investments that are either designed to be safer or are currently in a very comfortable situation to where I personally don't worry about holding any of these investments. Their share prices might fluctuate, obviously if there's some kind of recession, but these holdings with their dividends have been very secure up to this point. The first investment is the InfraCap US Preferred Stock ETF, ticker PFFA. According to this ETF's website, this fund seeks current income and secondarily, capital appreciation through a portfolio of preferred securities issued by U.S. companies with market capitalizations of over $100 million. On its fact sheet, this ETF has three key features, which are a focus on income, active management, and enhanced exposure through using a modest amount of leverage to help enhance portfolio beta and current income. Preferred stocks are a really reliable source of dividend income. These are publicly traded investments that are more like a mixture of common stocks and bonds. Much like common stocks, companies will issue preferred shares to raise money for their business, but preferred stocks function differently than common stock. They have a fixed par value, also known as face value, and they pay a set dividend. As a result, preferred shares of stock don't see any potential share price growth, and they always trade near their face value. So with that in mind, why would anyone want to hold preferred shares of stock if there's no potential for share price growth? The answer is that preferred shares of stock offer a larger dividend yield with greater stability. Preferred shareholders have greater priority over common shareholders. Before companies like Annaly Capital can pay dividends to shareholders of their stock, NLY, they first have to pay preferred shareholders of their stock their fixed dividend amount. Although NLY has gone through many dividend cuts throughout their history, their preferred shareholders don't see dividend cuts because they're required to pay that fixed amount. The only possibility of preferred shareholders getting a dividend cut is if the entire company is near bankruptcy. Preferred shares typically come with very high yields of between 6 and 10%. When it comes to investing in preferred stocks, I always prefer holding ETFs over individual companies because preferred stocks are very thinly traded and I like the increased diversification that comes with an ETF. PFFA also pays monthly dividends, which to my knowledge, not a single individual preferred stock pays monthly dividends. This is not the kind of holding that you should expect to see a great deal of dividend growth from, but with a yield of almost 9.5% with monthly dividends, it's a safer investment if there are more difficult times ahead. The next area that has some really sturdy high-yielding investments would be the energy sector. Despite this sector being cyclical, the good news is that energy is a commodity that's always needed, and there's a handful of stocks in this sector that have many years and even decades of consistently paying and increasing their dividends. One of my favorites in this sector is MPLX. This company owns and operates midstream energy infrastructure and logistical assets in the United States. They're involved in the gathering, processing, and transportation of natural gas. They're also involved in the gathering, storage, transportation, and distribution of crude oil and refined products. MPLX also provides services in the midstream sector across the hydrocarbon value chain through their logistics and gathering segments. It is a master limited partnership which comes with its own unique tax consequences if you decide to invest in them. But this holding has been a really great performer for a number of years. In 2015, the company merged with another MLP called MarkWest Energy Partners, which did result in their share price falling back to their near IPO price. However, since their launch in 2013, MPLX has grown their distributions every year and they have some of the best growth and coverage in the energy sector. According to Seeking Alpha, their 5-year distribution growth is 5.43% and they also have a current yield of 8.34%. Their coverage as of last quarter continues to be excellent with their latest payment being more than 160% covered. Their distributable cash flow has grown 7% from a year ago, so they are earning more than enough free cash flow from their operations to continue to support and grow their distributions to shareholders. Overall, MPLX has been a really outstanding performer that'll hopefully continue to post good results going forward. Another stock in the energy sector is Enbridge, ticker ENB. 
Enbridge is a Canadian energy infrastructure company that operates through four core segments, which are liquids pipelines, natural gas pipelines, gas utilities and storage, and renewable energy. The company transports roughly 30% of the crude oil products in North America and about 65% of U.S.-bound Canadian oil production. They also transport about 20% of all natural gas consumed in the U.S. through a midstream network that stretches for more than 73,000 miles across North America and the Gulf of Mexico. Right now it doesn't quite offer an 8% yield, it's currently yielding about 7%, but I think it's worth mentioning briefly for several reasons. Enbridge has paid dividends for 69 years and they've grown their dividend every year for 29 years and counting. They currently have a compound annual growth rate of 10%, which is one of the best track records in the energy sector. Their DCF continues to grow as they continue to expand their outreach across more territories and expand into green energy. Their stock share price has been pretty flat for over the course of a decade, but if you include the growing dividends with your total return, then it's been a worthwhile holding for dividend investors. It's going to depend on your goals, but I'm personally not going to complain about a near 7% yielding stock with a very comfortable payout ratio and consistently above average dividend growth. There's other high-yielding energy stocks that exist that are worth considering. Enterprise Product Partners, ticker EPD, is another excellent master limited partnership with a longer track record than MPLX. They've also never reduced their distributions, although their payout growth has been slower than MPLX. Moving on, another sector that's great for high-yielding dividends are business development companies. So far for this year, we have been seeing a handful of BDC starting to buckle as interest rates remain higher for longer. For the majority of these investments, though, they have been steady. But if you ask me which BDC I think would be in the best position to survive some kind of a crash, my pick would have to be Aries Capital. There's a lot going on for this BDC that sets them apart from the majority of their peers. They just released their second quarter results, which showed this company is still doing really good. Aries Capital is still the largest company in the BDC sector, with their portfolio having a fair value of $25 billion as of June 30th. They're one of only a handful of BDCs that were around before the financial crisis, so they have experience in dealing with some intense economic conditions. Their non-accruals, or their percentage of investments that aren't performing up to expectations, have been declining. They currently make up 1.5% of their portfolio, which is an improvement from 1.7% last quarter and well below their historic average of 2.9%. Their NAV growth has also been really good while other BDCs have been seeing theirs decrease over the past year. Right now Aries Capital has a dividend payout ratio of about 78%, which is pretty comfortable for this kind of company. For more than two years now, this company has also been aggressively growing the cash on their balance sheet, likely to ensure that they can handle anything that might be on the horizon. This company continues to be my favorite BDC and my top pick in this sector in the event of some kind of market turndown or recession. But with that being said, these are some of my top picks that I think are well positioned to make it through worsening market conditions if this sell-off continues. If not, then that's great, these holdings will continue to do better. Nobody can predict the future, however, these holdings do look well positioned if things get worse. But with that being said, that's going to conclude today's video. If you'd like to connect and also see what's inside my own personal dividend portfolio, then feel free to check me out over on our Patreon, where you'll receive updates and be able to talk to me and other higher yielding dividend and income investors. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and until next time, take care.